Okay, my first step is going to be to set up uh, my cooling water systems. Uh, so, uh, first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on my freshwater cooler, shut off valve one, and I'm going to open up my freshwater cooler bypass. Uh, what that's going to allow me to do is use my temperature controller so I can uh, adjust my temperature and it will be controlled. It's going to be set to auto and I'm looking at a target of roughly about 35 degrees and I could increase or decrease my set point if I'm not there. Um, for what I'm going to be cooling, I'm going to have my turbo generator, which we're going to use later, as well as my air compressor. Oh, that did not acknowledge. Um, I'm going to do a lamp test. Oh, I did note that the light is out. We'll need to confirm to make sure that that valve is actually open. Um, in order to get flow through my system, uh, I'm going to have a few other things. First of all, I'm going to bypass my high temperature system. And I'm going to uh, start my auxiliary pump. In addition, since I have provided cooling water or need cooling water to my freshwater cooler on the seawater panel, I am going to open up freshwater cooler number one. Okay, to set up our air systems, we have our start air system first. So we'll open up our cooling water supply valves now that we have cooling water going to them. Um, we have our uh, start air inlet and outlet valves. So outlet valve one, inlet valve one. Um, if we want to fill up both tanks, we can open up both tanks and we can uh, as well open up our pathway to receiver two. Um, we can start our compressors here. So we can start our air compressor one and two, and later we'll switch it over into auto mode. We can see that pressure is starting to build in a receiver. So I think we're doing okay. And we're going to repeat the process with our service air system. So service air needs cooling water. We have a inlet valve to the receiver, outlet valve to the receiver, and then our control air filter. Uh, we'll also start this compressor and note that control air pressure is starting to rise. In order to avoid overpressurizing our air receivers, uh, we are going to set our air compressors to auto. They will automatically turn off once we have reached pressure. Okay, so I'm going to work at starting the boiler. I've done a couple things before starting. First is I've opened up the diesel oil supply valve from the service tank so that my boiler can be fed with fuel. That's in the other room. Uh, also what I've done is I've gone to my seawater system and I've opened up my seawater supply valve to my condenser. And also I've switched over from the auxiliary seawater pump to my main seawater pump number one so I have enough flow for the condenser when it needs it. Uh, first thing I'm going to concentrate on is water level in the boiler. So I want to make sure that I can uh, add in some water. I am sitting a little low right now. In order to add in, I'm going to open up my main feed water discharge valve. I'm going to make some adjustments to my feed water controller. Um, so my control valve, uh, maybe around 25%. So I have decent range of control. And I'm going to turn on my feed water pump main feed water pump. Uh, that should drive my water level up and I'll keep an eye on that while I'm doing some other tasks. 
Uh, next thing that I'm going to do is organize my fuel systems. So I have my DO burner type, diesel oil, DO select valve on DO, as well as turning on my diesel oil pump. Check back to my water level. I can see that it is rising and I'm probably okay in the range that I'm at. Um, so I'm going to turn off my pump. Fuel is okay. Uh, now I'm going to work at air, so I'll need to turn on my combustion air fan. And I'm going to adjust my airflow controller. So I'm going to increase my airflow controller. Up to 100%. And then I'm going to start my purge. We should see an increase in the combustion airflow. and my purge is in progress. While this is going on, I could work at my steam side, and uh, on the steam side, I'm gonna put some vents. So I have a boiler vent valve, I have a superheater vent and drain valve, I have my main steam line drain, and I'm gonna open up my main steam line shutoff valve. So make sure that we have that guy fully open to 100%. We'll bring up all the system as one. It appears my purge has complete. Uh, so now I'm going to get ready to start the, the burner. I'm going to set my oil and air both to 10%. Be careful when you're adjusting these gauges that you are looking straight down so you're not distorted. So I'm at 10 and 10. My purge, I'm gonna double check, it is complete. I have a boiler trip showing, I'm gonna reset my trip. And then I'm going to start my burner one. Pilot light should start, the pilot flame followed by the main flame, and we'll be able to see some movement of my combustion airflow and fuel flow, as well as movement on the smoke density that's being monitored at the stack. Once our flame is um, stable and consistent, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to adjust our flame, air, oil, and output. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to adjust our master controller so that we have a maximum uh, flame output of around 20%. So we'll have it. Our boiler is getting to the point where we're starting to build a little bit of pressure. So our gauge is starting to, to flicker a little bit. And we know that we are uh, at the point where um, we are starting to build a little bit of pressure. Um, you can see our, our gauge just twitched a little bit. Um, once we've built about a bar of pressure, we're going to be able to close some of our vents. We're going to start with our boiler vent valve. Uh, which would be our first uh, component we're going to use. Um, follow that by our superheater vent and drain valve. And as long as our drain stays open, then we're going to have positive flow, flow through our system in order to prevent our superheater from overheating. We've just gone above one bar. Uh, when we get up to about two bar, we may start to provide some steam loads on our system. The first steam load that we'll likely use is in order to warm up our um, feed water tank. And what we have are a couple valves 
So feed water tank steam heating, big or small. Um, let's try the big one. So we have a bit of a, a steam load on our boiler. Once we've established the load on our boiler, uh, and normally we go and monitor this on site, but what we would want to do is eventually close our steam line drain. Our boiler steam is going to continue to rise um, because uh, we are adding in more heat. We are using up some steam, which means that we're going to start to think about replenishing the lost water. We're sitting around zero water level, which is great. What I'm going to do is I'm going to decrease my feed water control valve position to about zero. I'm going to turn on my pump, confirm that my feed water discharge valve is open, and I'm going to set my water controller into auto. When we get up to about five, bar of steam pressure, we're going to be safe to get our boiler under automatic controls. So we're going to adjust our master controller into auto. We are going to confirm that the set point is around seven. Careful of the scaling, it starts at five, not zero, um, but around seven. And we are going to once the ready light is eliminated, put our burn management system into auto. Burn management system is going to make decisions to start and stop the boiler based on the pressure. So it will prevent the boiler from overpressurizing as well. It will prevent the boiler from running out of pressure. Before we walk away from the boiler, we'll check a couple things. One, burner management is in auto. That's our primary safety. Number two, we're going to make sure that our feed water controller is in auto. Pump is on and discharge valve is open. And our level is approximately zero and not swaying one way or the other. I think at this point, I'm safe to walk away from my boiler panel and go concentrate on the turbine. Okay, with boiler up to pressure, level under control, I can concentrate on starting my turbo generator. First thing I'm going to do is check my lube oil tank level. Uh, I'm going to target around 50%, so if I need to add some lube oil, I'm going to do so using my makeup valve. Once my lube oil is up to 50%, I'm going to turn off my lube oil valve. Uh, I'm going to then sort out my lube oil system. So I'm going to have a lube oil filter valve number one, cooler open, lube oil priming pump running. We can turn him to auto and we're going to engage our turning gear for about a minute. While the turning gear is running, I'm going to start my steam side, which is going to require me to switch my selection valve from boiler. I'm going to open up my inlet valve and my outlet valve. I noted that the light did not turn on for my outlet valve. I'm going to do a lamp test and notice that I have two lights that are not indicating outlet valve and trip. So I'm going to have to manually ensure that probably using the help of a partner. Steam outlet valve shut off is going to be open and my steam line drain open. Turning gear after a minute will be turned off and my boiler or my turbo generator trip indicator will need to be reset. I can add steam to the turbine, bringing up emergency stop valve position to about 15-20%. We should see an increase in the revolution.
revolutions. And we're going to hold for about a minute. Reason to hold is to allow any water to drain out that may be in the system, as well as to allow it to slowly get moving, as well as to have an opportunity for new oil to circulate through the system and have our seals do their, their job. Um, we're going to slowly increase from here. Taking our time to allow the turbo generator casing to warm up as well as the internal components. We're doing so, we're keeping an eye on our vibration. We're going to bring this up until our revolutions are sitting around 6400 RPM. Doing so, we're going to try and minimize our vibrations, so keeping it down say below 40% level would be a good target. Once our emergency stop valve is around 50% and our revolutions is around 6400, we can continue to open up the emergency stop valve all the way to 100% and finally close off our drain valve. I'm going to do that now. So I'm at 100%, revolutions are a little over 6,000, blue oil tank level is a little over 50%, and my vibration is down around 10 to 12%. Drain line closed, and then my final step would be to connect this to the electrical system. Okay, so our final component is gonna be to connect our turbine to the electrical system. Uh, first thing we're going to do is ensure that our selection is to turbo generator. We are going to come over and we are going to turn on our excitation. We can see now that we're reading voltage, we are reading frequency for our turbo generator. We're going to take note of our synchronization panel. What we want is for our red light to be turning in a clockwise direction fairly slowly. So if we are not, we're going to adjust our governor in order to make sure that we have that case. So I can see here my red light's going in the wrong direction. I'm going to increase my governor. And now it's spinning in the right direction, maybe a little fast. I'm going to slow it down slightly. I have two options for synchronizing. I can automatic synchronize it or I can manually synchronize it. Automatic synchronization, what I would do is ensure that my selection is to the turbo generator mode. If my light shows as ready, I can hit in and it will automatically connect it when it gets to the proper position. I can also manually synchronize it and I would do so by engaging my circuit breaker on my turbo generator once that red light gets to about the 11 o'clock position. I'm now connected. We can see that by the red light stopped and I am starting to produce a little bit of current from my turbo generator. By raising or lowering my governor, I can take on more load or less load by the steam turbine. That's the end of your scenario.